Priestley the Chad is finally here, and today I'll teach you how to build him best. Let's get into it now. What artifacts does our buff legend use? Well, his best in slot pick is easily 4-piece Mayonnaise Hunter. It synergizes the best with his kit and provides him with plenty of crit rate to boot. He finds the 2-piece beneficial as well. However, 4-piece Blizzard Strayer can actually come close, if not beat Mayo, if using Reese in Freeze, since it provides him with some nice free stats. 4-piece Lament is also a powerful pick for Reese across all his teams, providing him with quite the solid amount of attack percent. 4-piece Desert Pavilion works on him too, thanks to the full 4-piece effect even if the two-piece of it is wasted. Four-piece Shimanawas is also a solid pick for him, primarily in Melt, and should be highly accessible considering how four-piece emblem once dictated all our lives. Plus, it's in the strong box now. Only issue with this set is you'll of course not be bursting as much. As for main stats, you'll want to go for either this on a Melt build or this. The Attack Sounds build is also applicable to his Freeze build or his build in any team other than Melt. Stub stub priority looks something like this for Melt. And this for Freeze. Since you made it to the end of this section, why don't I reward you with some nice sheets ranking all his best artifact picks. Pause if you'd like to read for longer. First for Melt, then for Freeze. His ER requirements are pretty standard. His burst only has a cost of 60, so you'll only need about 130% ER to have him bursting consistently. Now on to his weapons. Riesley Kujo has quite a few good weapon picks up his sleeve. So what are his best options? R1 Cash Flow is easily his best in slot, being his signature weapon. No surprise there. A nice stat stick with a very synergistic passive. While this is good for him, I'd actually advise getting his C1 first and then his weapon, which we'll cover later on. Up next is R5 Woodziff. All the buffs can be potentially useful for him depending on the team, and the crit stat is appreciated. R1 Tuli Tula's Remembrance is a delicious pick for Reese, but passive also contributing to him nicely, and good crit, so it's pretty close to his signature. Skyward Atlas and Lost Prayer have similar performance on him between them, and are pretty decent picks across most of his teams. Home of the Eternal Flow, Nerd Village's weapon, is a usable pick on him too, but it's not as good as his other viable 5-star pick. However, it does have the fun additional perk that Reese's ER costs get lowered from 130% down to 116%. Solar Pearl is pretty good for Reese, especially at R5, and is, once again, pretty comfy to build him on. For free-to-plays, you can consider Flowing Purity, which is a new Fontaine craftable weapon. It's not that good on him, and I just urge you to use Widziff if you can. But it's usable. Ballad of the Boundless Blue, the weapon that comes from that event featuring my precious baby cakes, is also a pick for you free to plays out there since it's pretty close to flowing purity. Hey, since you made it to the end of this section, why don't I provide you with this nice sheet ranking Reese's best choices? Pause if you'd like to read for longer. But before we move on, if you're enjoying the content, why not consider liking and subscribing, maybe even leaving a cool comment down below. If you do, then Reesley will invite you to have a wee tea party with some Jaffa cakes and whatnot. Now, who does Reesley need to form the Stardust Crusaders? First up is his Melt archetype. You can run him in a solid reverse Melt team while also pulling off a few Melts on Reese himself. This core would consist of the man himself, Jangling Impact, Bennett, and then a flex slot of sorts. You can put whoever here, ideally another Cryo unit, to help out with the team's Cryo application. Shenha, Rosaria, Kayak, Chongus, etc. You can also play Burn Melt by playing Reese with Nahida, or just any Dendro unit in general, such as the Goofy Ah Baiju. Then, his Freeze archetype. You can play him in Freeze teams as a replacement for Ayaka and Ganyu. The core would be Reese, a Hydro, an Animo, preferably Kazuha or my beloved Waifu Venti, and a Cryo in the last slot. You know how it goes. For example, Reese, Shinchou, Kazuha, Shenha, Kokomi, Venti, Rosaria, Reese, Kokomi, Kazuha, Diona, you get the idea. Reese is pretty nice since he can actually make use of Shinchou and Freeze, unlike Ganyu who can't at all, and Ayaka who has to weave it in there. You can also go the route of having Reese as a solo cryo and playing him in Reesley double hydro. This is a comp that could potentially output the most overall team DPS for Reesley. The final best slot can be either Kazuha or Shenha. You choose. By association, this means Reesley is good in mono cryo as well. Basically, three cryos and Kazuha tagged on at the end. This team would normally be Ayaka, Ganyu, Shenha, and Kazuha. In this case, you'd replace Ayaka with Reese. 
It's a decent team and is mostly used to combat single target scenarios for four piece Blizzard Stair users. Also, being an on field cryo DPS means he's pretty good in any place where cryo doesn't mess up any reactions. For example, a slot in for Hyperbloom teams. So, you can use him as a nice driver. Now we've talked teams. It's time to delve into how his kit should be used. How does this guy work? First off, his normals. We'll do a string of five cryo hits, and you're unable to reset the combo of his normals dashing after you use his skill, aka you can't dash cancel on him. This only applies if you've used his skill, by the way. Why does his skill prevent him from cancelling? Well, when you use his skill, Reese will enter the chilling penalty state. Sounds like me if I don't wear socks for longer than a second. We'll refer to chilling penalty as his skill buff, just to keep things simple from here on. His skill buff will increase Reese's interruption resistance, aka it's harder to knock him over now. Plus, when his HP is above 50%, he'll gain a normal attack damage bonus for every hit he does with his skill activated, while being above that threshold. He'll also lose a percentage of his HP every time he manages to hit an enemy during this buff, which scales off talent level, and he'll lose HP like this every 0.1 seconds. You can cancel his skill buff early by swapping off field with him. His burst will then deal a huge AoE cryo blast in the area in front of him. Yeah, his burst is pretty simple. His A1 is nice for his charged attack. If he falls below 50% HP, his charged will be enhanced and deal 50% more damage than usual. And after hitting an enemy with his enhanced charged, he'll recover 30% of his max HP. This can happen once every five seconds. Then for his A4. Every time Reese gains or loses HP, he'll gain a 6% attack bonus during his enhanced normals uptime. This has a cap of 5 stacks. As for his talent priorities, it's pretty clear. Every portion of his kit does benefit him, so I'd level up all of his talents. But you can prioritize his normals first and foremost for sure, as it's where the majority of his DPS comes from. Well, now we're at Reesley's combos, so let's discuss how to make him aura the most efficiently. He has one fairly simple string to keep up with. Do all that and repeat. He'll melt on his N1s, N3s, N4s, and N5s. He should also melt on his charge attacks and burst in this rotation. It's the most standardized combo for Reesley, which should work across all his comps. Aside from that, he's a fairly simple unit to use, so it's no problem if you just go ham on him as well. Ready to release your Reesley from his C0 jail? Let's take him to the next level. His C1's amazing for him. I'd argue that his C1 was even more influential compared to Tau C1 and how good it is for her. A 20% increase, and is actually better to pick up for him over his signature. Just a big DPS increase for his burst, not much more to say here. Definitely a solid con for him, but there's better C2s out there. Lovely upgrade to his normals, and a very welcome one at that. Upgrade his DPS by 15%. This is a pretty niche buff, and it isn't that big of a deal for him in my opinion. Sure, it's nice, but I don't really think it's all that good for his C4. Just an increase to his burst by... free. Not a big deal. Only a 5% increase to his DPS, maybe. Then for the big bad C6. This sucker increases his DPS by a whopping 40%, since it provides Reesley with a buttload of stats and a big instance of extra damage. So yes, it's pretty great for him. But I'd only go for this if you're really dedicated to this guy. I mean, you naturally kind of are if you went this far. Reesley's cons are honestly huge buffs to his performance. I'd recommend getting at least C1 if you plan to play him long term, since it pretty much completes his kit. Only a C4 and C5 are underwhelming in my opinion. With that being said, Reesley is sort of in the awkward position that Sino and Ayato are in. His roles are fulfilled by other units arguably better, and he's mostly just a jack of all trades, master of none type of dude. I think if you want a simple buy the numbers cryo DPS, I'd recommend Ayaka or Ganyo over Reese. But there's nothing wrong with playing Reesley either. Those are just my honest thoughts, and I'm somebody who likes this character. However, he is serviceable at the end of the day, and you can certainly clear floor 12 with him. Hopefully this guide was able to get your Reesley punching his enemies into next Tuesday.